Thank you, Adrian, for the introduction. It's my pleasure to be here today. It seems like just yesterday I was attending reInvent and learning about other companies and how they're leveraging the cloud. And yet, here we are today talking about Hulu and our journey into the cloud. Let me start with a little bit of history about Hulu. We started off a little over nine years ago as a free ad-supported video-on-demand service where you can watch last night's TV shows on the web. Back then, instead of pirating Family Guy, you had the opportunity to watch it on Hulu in your dorm room and then go to sleep with clear conscience. We've come a long way since then. We've launched two subscription video-on-demand services, one with limited commercials, one with no commercials. We're now available on all major mobile and living room devices. We also added premium content, starting with Showtime, then HBO and Cinemax. And we're also a major player in original content, with shows like Handmaid's Tale, which received 13 Emmy nominations, and just this past week won the TCA Award for Best Program and Best Drama of this year. But we're not just a media company. At our core, we are and always have been a tech company. Practically everything that powers Hulu today, we built from scratch. We manage our own infrastructure and data centers, our own private cloud management systems, build our own video pipeline, subscription and billing, ad support infrastructure. Everything you, we have, you name it and we build it. But our mission has always been to redefine TV. And our launch of live TV this past May marked over a year since we started on a journey to build a new Hulu experience. Blending together subscription video on demand, live, DVR, premium content in one seamless, elegant user experience has never been done before. Now, to make that happen, this wasn't just a small rewrite. We have to rebuild our entire tech stack from back-end services all the way to every single application. Now, building live TV is really hard, especially when you're trying to do it in a really different way. I'm very proud of our team and how it came together to solve all these challenges and more over the course of past year. I also invite all of you to join us at the reInvent breakout session later this year to take a deeper look into how we actually made it happen. Still, let me highlight just a few of the puzzles that we had to struggle with. Combining a massive VOD library with live stream meant metadata became a huge problem for us. Not having the description or the movie art just right could mean the difference between you actually starting to watch the program you're looking for or skipping right past it, right? Let's talk about the Avengers movie, for example. I'm sure you're thinking about the Marvel one that was highly successful a few years back. But did you know there was another one that was less successful in the late 90s with Uma Thurman and Sean Connery? Did you know there was also the Avengers series on British TV in the 60s? So clearly, just having the stream right is not enough. Having the name, the description, and the right image is all needed to make sure we capture the attention of the viewer. We also knew that to launch live successfully, sports and news are going to be a big deal. Now, we're a national service, and to get the coverage that we needed, we have to ingest over 600 streams, and that includes regional sports networks and local affiliates. Now, just think about it. That's about 20 gigabytes per second of streams coming in. And that number is only growing as we're getting more and more coverage. So needless to say, we didn't want to worry about that type of ingress in our data center. Now, with all these complexities we had to tackle, with a fairly aggressive title line, deadline, it was important for us to stay laser focused. We didn't want to worry about procuring machines or scaling up network and bandwidth in our data center. We also really didn't know how many subscribers we're going to get or what the viewing patterns and spikes are going to look like, how much of the traffic is going to go to VOD, how much of the traffic is going to go to live. So while we've experimented with cloud before, this became our first large-scale production deployment into the cloud. And I'm happy to say that we've selected AWS to be our partner. Let's talk a little bit about how we did it. First, let me give you sort of a streaming 101 lesson. To make streaming work at a very basic level, you need your video segments 
and you need your manifest that tells the player how to put those segments together and what order, where to put ads, and so forth. You get those two things working, and you're ready to stream. For our live service, our live ingest, our packaging, our manifest generation, our DVR, and our origin are all in the cloud. To get those 600 streams, we're working with multiple encoding vendors to get the data into AWS in a variety of ways. Once there, we repackage it and normalize it to our flavor of HLS and Dash Live. We apply commercial DRM. We generate manifests on the fly. And once ready, we push it all into S3 origin, and then from there into CDNs. That's it. I think you guys are all ready to go and build your own streaming service on the weekend. So all you need to know. No, in reality, this was a fun ride, and we did have some tricks and turns along the way. Selecting S3 for origin made a lot of sense, and AWS helped us get all the performance we needed out of that. Some of the other areas were not as clear cut. On the manifest generation, we were originally using Redis, and we had to make a very last minute change to find a way to persist manifest more reliably. Now, we worked with AWS very closely and were able to re-architect the entire manifest storage portion, base it on top of Aurora, launch and debug it all with about a week or so to spare before going live. We also had a multi-CDN strategy for our VOD business, so we really had no plans to use CloudFront. Still, it was very easy to use and cost-effective, and we decided to give it a shot during the private beta. We used it our, as our exclusive CDN for private beta, and we're very pleased with performance characteristics. So now we're using CloudFront along other CDN providers that we have. Now, I don't know if we were lucky or prepared, probably a little bit of both, but our launch in May went very smoothly. And a big part of that is our partnership with AWS to prepare from the operational standpoint and make sure the performance is tuned. AWS folks were there working side by side with our engineers, pre-warming ELBs, monitoring traffic, and making sure we do whatever it takes that, so that the release goes smoothly. Now that we're past that step and we're up and running, they're continuing to work closely with us to make sure we optimize the cost and also find better ways to leverage AWS. Now, all of this is still brand new. We're learning how customers are interacting with this new way of watching TV. Blending VOD with live with, D, uh, with DVR also means that our traffic patterns are going to be different than those of other players in this industry. A good example of that was Game of Thrones premiere just about a month ago. By balancing between VOD and live streams, between our data center and the cloud, we were able to normalize the load on our infrastructure and keep up with, quite frankly, a massive spike in demand. There is still a lot to do, but with our ability to burst into the cloud, we're excited to continue to innovate and make it a better user experience with AWS as our side, with, as our cloud partner. Thank you very much for your time.